the camera experience. Everybody's waiting for that camera experience. Those days is one of the key factors when you decide to buy a handset, at least for me, camera and battery life. And of course performance, but even uh, mid-range processors those days are totally able to provide you a very, very, very good experience especially if you don't push the device too much, right? Once again, I'm happy to report that the camera experience of the Poco F1 is excellent at the price, right? It's roughly $300, if you can touch it for that. I still think for £350 in the UK, it's still a very good deal. So it's not like a iPhone 10, Samsung Galaxy 9 Plus, OnePlus 6, closer of course, but probably not at that, on that level, but it's still a very, very, very good camera. Now I'd like to mention a few characteristics and features offered by the Poco F1 in the camera department. So the interface, the interface is pretty simple. It's pretty Apple-esque. There's not a million uh, features or add-ons like for instance Huawei is providing, so it's pretty clean. Uh, what you have is automatic HDR if you decide to turn it on for both sides. So the rear camera, of course, but also for the selfie camera. And I personally find that it's working very well. I was quite impressed with it. So HDR could be turned on, off or auto, which in my experience is much better than on any uh, Huawei device. For some reason, Huawei, why wouldn't you implement like auto HDR? I still love the P20 Pro and I'm very excited with the Mate 20 Pro, by the way. So I'm not against Huawei, but, but some of their choices are Odd. So I won't talk about everything, but the experience, good quality, especially uh, in daylight, so indoors as well, again, depending the level of light, quality is usually very good, yeah? Uh, it's not again on the level of uh, flagships or like a Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, for instance, but it's very good. It's a bit on the slow side, I find, the shutter speed, but if you can deal with that, which is not a huge deal, we've been spoiled. If, if like me, you've used like a high-end phone, but it's a bit slower, but it's still good, yeah. So the quality is good, very acceptable. Of course, the more stable you are, the more likely you are to have everything in focus, because I find that as usual with smartphone photography, you need to be very, very still if you want to capture, for instance, a portrait of someone, or if you want to capture a dog, at least if you use, again, uh, auto mode. Good thing here is that um, Poco is offering some kind of very basic, very limited, but present, full manual mode. So you've got full, you've got four or five characteristics you can, uh, you can tweak, I think it's four even, such as the ISO and the uh, focus. Um, so it's better than nothing and it's built within the app. So if you want to play with it, you can. But again, in auto mode, like a uh, normal like point and shoot experience, the quality is very good. I find that the bokeh, so the blurred backgrounds, is seriously surprising for that at that price. Uh, it's again, is it like a Pixel 2 equivalent? No, but I'm again very happy with both the selfie portrait and then the rear camera portrait and bokeh. So the photos with the camera are pretty good, except again if you're in very low light slash very dim environments. What about videos? Again, I have to say that based on my experience, video is really good. Yeah? It's stabilized even at 4K, but again, the level of stabilization, mainly EIS, it's okay, but it's not on the level of a OnePlus 6 or other, again, high-end uh, smartphones, like possibly the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus or the iPhone. But remember that a lot of those phones are cropping a lot to achieve that level of stabilization, right? But of course, if you're serious about vlogging, put it on a gimbal. Another test vlogging, so it's handheld, so I'm in Bayswater in London, so just to give you an idea of stabilization, that's in uh, maximum resolution, we're using the front-facing camera, and to give you an idea of the audio as well, so as you can see, it's a very bright day, so I'll try to go in the sun as well. Sun is coming. Just to give you an idea of the audio recording capability of the device in bright daylight. And now the world famous telephone box is in London. So, just to prove that I'm in London in the UK.
and now vlogging with the rear facing camera so still in London there is water I can't see my screen obviously but I'll try not to get run over hopefully it be a good idea of again stabilization this is in 4k and I believe there is like electronic stabilization not great but still there tell me what you think I'm in the shade now I'll be in the sun in probably 60 seconds so how is it dealing with backlight and shadows you tell me I'll be in the sun right now Okay. It's quite noisy again, a lot of cars, it's a bit windy, so uh, tell me how good the audio is. But I would have thought that I would give you a good, again, uh, impression on the quality of the 4K recording with the rear facing camera doing blogging. And on 1080p stabilized, so just to show the difference with 4K, so is it better? It's quite bright, we are in Westfield, in West London, so I'll let you be the judge of the quality and the stabilization compared to the other footage, which was in 4K. And now forward facing, so it's still the rear camera, 1080p stabilized, and we are in Westfield, so tell me what you think, and tell me if you think it's much better than the 4K version, which doesn't have completely stabilization. Now, a quick test to see how easy it is to capture fast moving subjects using the Poco F1 rear facing camera. Monkey! 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 You see the shutter speed is not very fast. Monkey! Monkey! Girl! I'm gonna now switch off the AI just to see if it improves anything. Or make it worse. Okay. Girl. Should be enough. So that's blurred. That one is mostly good. A bit blurred. 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 Okay-ish. Okay for social media, I guess. Okay-ish, be blurred, blurred, blurred. That one is okay. One is okay. Okay. Blurred. Blurred. And that one is good. So as you can see, it's not the fastest shutter speed. Hopefully that will be improved in a future firmware update. Um, it's not bad as such for like general photography, for uh, landscapes or for uh, portrait photography as long as the subject is not moving. But if you are willing to use your POCO F1 on fast moving subjects, that might be a problem. So again, there is hope because I believe that POCO could correct that in a future update. So tell me what you think in the comment section below. Just a quick tip to uh, make sure more of your photos are in focus, right, is to use the manual mode with a fast shutter speed. So if you use the manual mode, it goes to one thousandth of a second. And look here with monkey. Should be enough. Now let's check very quickly. Most of the pictures will be in focus. Of course that works essentially when you've got a well-lit environment because in low light, to the contrary, you need to uh, use a very slow shutter speed to capture some steady images. 
So that was a quick fix. Again, it's not ideal, I know, but it's working. And at least Poco provided us with a basic manual mode within the camera app. In my opinion, the burst mode on the Poco F1 is excellent. As you can see here, most of the shots, if not all the shots, are in focus. This is on my hand. My hand was quite close from the camera, so you can see that the background is blurred. It looks very sharp, it looks very nice. Look at here with a few people behind it. Very good, I'm really impressed. You can take up to 100 pictures using the burst mode, so... And again, it looks extremely good. One thing I wanted to mention is that, strangely enough, in the native gallery, so uh, photo album, it seems like those burst mode pictures are not aggregated under one sequence. As you can see here, so if you take 100 pictures, it will take 100 pictures and there's no intelligence, there's no AI telling you what's the best picture. Still very good again, as you can see the quality is brilliant, but contrary to Google Photos, you have to browse all your 100 pictures to select the one that you'd like to share, for instance, on social media. It's just a bit odd, and I'm hoping that in a future update, Poco will fix that, because it doesn't seem very effective. What do you think? And to wrap up the quick tour of the edit mode on photos on the Poco F1, here is a photo I took with the rear camera in portrait mode. This is just available in portrait mode. If I click on the top right, as you can see, you've got access uh, to a few options. One is the level of blur. As you can see, it's quite nice. You can totally blur the background, so it's pretty cool. Even if it's not like on the level of uh, the iPhone XS, XS Max and R, it still looks pretty decent to me. And you can save it as a new photo. You also have light trails. And light trails, the idea is to, it's quite cool, is to change the shape of the color in the background. Here you've got parts or you've got like kind of stars and some more cool features. And you've got 3D lighting, it's a bit like on the iPhone. It does a decent job, it's not amazing, but you know, it's there. Some of them are pretty cool, like that one and that one. So I'll show you all the options in a second. But let's go back to light trails for a second. Here with the heart shape, the beauty of it is that not only you can save a, an image, or you can save a video as well. So if I click video here, just to show you how it looks like before showing you all the options of editing in a second. Now you've got a very cool video and you can share that on social media. I just wanted to show you a few pictures taken with the full auto mode. It's not a bad mode, it's just that it's a bit slow, but as you can see, you can retrieve a lot of details using a tool like Photo Limer on Mac. Now I'm going to zoom. It's pretty shaky as you can see. But that's digital zoom, so we'd expect it.
And now a quick test of vlogging at night. So this is with the front-facing camera, 1080p, on the Poco F1. Just to give you an idea of what you could experience if you decide to go by this excellent foe. I'm uh, walking our doggy. So uh, tell me what you think of the audio recording capability of the device and also color, rendition, noise. I'm uh, hand holding the phone. Again, just a quick test to uh, share the user experience using the Poco F1 camera. And now vlogging with the rear facing camera in 4K with EIS on. Again, tell me what you think. It's very dark here. Just have the street lights. Hey, monkey. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, monkey. It's okay. It's okay. You should. It's okay. Again, tell me what you think of the quality of the camera in very dark environment. So, uh, I hope it looks as promising as it does on the front-facing camera. Et voilà, so I hope you found that video quite interesting indeed. I wanted to do something quite different from uh, all the rest of YouTube, which is always like showing some very specific photos, even comparing to other devices. But I think nothing replaces a proper user experience of the device firsthand. So uh, I think it's performing very well considering the price of the device. It's quite incredible if you ask me. Look at the sky. So if you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do, but please leave your comments below to tell us how to improve the format uh, of any future videos. And please consider subscribing. It's very important. It helps us a lot on the channel. So uh, in the meantime, I see you in the next one. Merci beaucoup, YouTube, et à bientôt. Salut.